Hi Rocketeers, I'm Charlie Garcia, and on this episode of High Power Rocketry, we're going to be talking about how to build your own launch pad, just like I did for our local Tripoli chapter. If you've been wondering where I am, I can't say too much about it, but I can say that I've been working on some of the coolest rocket engines in the world for my day job at Agile Space Industries. I'm the chief engineer on a variety of programs, one of which is working to land a brand new lunar lander on the surface of the moon here in the next couple of years. It takes up a whole bunch of time, but it's so exciting to work on awesome projects like this. As you can imagine, I have to work really hard at my day job to produce these incredibly sophisticated rocket engines. It's a lot of design work, a lot of complex analysis, and it really leaves me wondering sometimes uh, what I really enjoy about engineering, because while I do enjoy the analysis, sometimes it's fun to just build things and make things. And even as quick as we are building the rocket engines, sometimes it's nice to have an even shorter duration project. So for this particular launch pad project, I didn't actually design anything. I walked into my garage, I found a pile of steel that I'd been saving for some future project and decided this was it. Um, I pretty much just started cutting things and welding them together however I thought was going to make a good launch pad. I time-lapsed the whole process and I've narrated the build to show you how I built the launch pad. And then at the end, I'll show you the launch that I just performed off of this launch pad uh, at our local Durango Tripoli chapter. So to get started building the launch pad, I needed to cut a bunch of stock to length. I don't have any fancier tools for this, so I just used a battery-powered angle grinder and a lot of elbow grease. I was marking things out with just a pair of calipers and a normal tape measure, so the precision here isn't great and I had to grind a lot of things to fit. After I had a couple pieces to bake the base of the launch pad, I went over to my TIG machine and I tack welded everything together. It was really important to keep this square so that when I put the legs on later, the whole thing would sit level to the ground. Um, I had to weld this in a bunch of small short passes uh, so that the heat distortion wouldn't make things warp and pull out of square. Uh, so after welding the ends, um, I tried to get a fancy shot here of uh, doing a TIG weld down the, the spine of the launch pad base. Um, I probably need to invest in some better camera gear if I'm going to do that more often. So the vertical part of the launch pad is made from this uh, unistrut channel, and I had to grind the inside of it flush so that the launch rail could slide smoothly in and out of it. Um, this ended up being the most tedious part of the whole launch pad construction process, and it just took a whole bunch of very careful finesse work with the angle grinder. Once I had that uh, cut to length, I then needed to weld on the legs to it. To do this, I'm checking the fit uh, on the ground to see what gets it level, and then adjusting those angles, refining them with the angle grinder. So I'm just here marking out the last leg attachment bracket to weld up, uh, and switching batteries on the angle grinder before getting that all cut out. And then that's the last piece I need to, to go and weld onto the frame. Uh, so once I'm over here, the first trick is I have to get this set up to, to weld on. So I'm holding the, the leg attachment bracket in place with these uh, magnets, uh, and then very carefully adjusting the angle with the digital angle gauge. Here you can see I tack weld it in place and then I ran a bead down the side of it, and I actually built up a little extra material there just to make sure this was on super strong. I'm using filler rod to help me build up more material uh, in the corner of these welds. I'm certainly not an expert TIG welder, but I've, I've uh, made myself dangerous before. And then I get this other uh, side angle bracket on. This is for the, the other front leg, and I weld it up pretty much the same way. And now I coat, and I'm getting ready to do the back leg attachment points. And this is actually quite a bit trickier, just based on how I designed the pad. So grinding these angles is much trickier than the front two angles, because these angles need to be perfectly symmetrical so that the leg goes out straight to the back. And then I need to grind them down fine enough that the, the leg sweeps at the same angle as the other two. Um, and that, that's really tricky to check. Um, so I'm, I'm just doing a lot of measurement with the calipers and then uh, checking it. And then here I am setting up a fixture so that I can weld everything and I'm checking it for, for levelness. I level my welding bench so I can use that to check and make sure I've got everything set up right. And then I tack weld it in place and then I run uh, beams down the seam of that back piece. Uh, here I am actually cutting out the set of legs. I'm going to use three legs. These are going to screw onto those leg attachment brackets that I just added to the, the launch pad. Um, and this will let me disassemble the whole thing and, and put it in my car. Here I'm holding everything together with C-clamps, using a hand drill actually to use a fine drill bit, mark out, and then pilot hole all of these uh, so that they'll all line up. And then coming over to the drill press to drill the holes out to size uh, for an 832 through bolt. So once I get this cleaned up, then I go and I transfer it onto the launch pad which is a bit of an exercise in, in making it fit. Um, you can see here the launch pad is quite a bit bigger than my, uh, my drill press. Um, but once I get all these holes transferred, uh, which ended up being quite a project, I go back to the welder and I'm actually going to weld nuts on the backside of 
these holes. And so this will let me thread into leg attachment bracket and, and take the legs on and off. Uh, so I'm just trying this process with the back leg first, and then once I'm happy with the results, I'm gonna do it to the other two legs. It took a bit of finesse to get the, the nut to weld in place without damaging the thread, so I had to angle grind a couple of them off uh, and, re and repair the holes. Um, but once I had that process all worked out, I'm now going to do the front two legs. Uh, so pretty much just the same process you saw. I marked out the holes with calipers and marking fluid, and then I drilled the eight holes uh, in the, the legs themselves, and then I'm going to go transfer them back onto the launch pad structure. And then once they're on the launch pad structure, I'll bring the launch pad over here and drill it out on the drill press, which is exactly as tedious as it was the first time. It's, it's still a, a giant piece. I'm using WD-40 as a cutting fluid here. This is not a great cutting fluid. I should really get some, some drill and tap oil, but it works in a pinch and I had some handy. I'm still kind of getting the whole shop built up. It's really exciting to be able to just do a project like this and have enough stock and, and tools to be able to take on a project like this. So here I'm welding the, the last eight nuts onto the, uh, the launch pad frame so that I can attach all the legs with the screws and then move on to building the strong brack for the uh, launch rail itself. Welding these nuts on was, was a, a pretty uh, finicky process just because the risk was melting the threads and, and making it impossible to remove the bolt. I did weld these in place with the bolt uh, screwed in from the front side, so if I welded it to the bolt, um, I had to angle grind both the bolt head off and then the damaged nut off. Once I had all those welded in, I chased the, uh, the nuts themselves with a tap just to clean up the threads so it was really easy to, to thread in and out. This is going to be used in, in the great outdoors um, at our local Tripoli launch site here in Durango, so um, I didn't want dirt or anything there to clog it and make it uh, difficult to thread things in and out. And I'm just power tapping all of these, so uh, it went real fast. So here I've got it all assembled for the first try, and I'm actually marking out um, the strong back. So the strong back is a piece of flat steel with a welded on arc that uh, allows me to lock the strong back at any angle uh, between horizontal and vertical so that I can adjust the azimuth of the rocket uh, when it comes time to launch it. And it does this by pivoting around a, a large bolt uh, running through the center of the, the strong back. Uh, and drilling that hole here was a, a really tedious exercise. I had to go through several sizes of drill bits um, before it worked, but then when it did finally work, I gave it all a test fit. Um, and you can see there, it swept quite cleanly. Uh, so now I'm drilling the second hole for the um, locking mechanism to hold that strong back in place. And this is just a, a large bolt with a welded on handle so that I can uh, turn it with my free hand while I'm building the rocket. So now I have to take the strong back, you can see that here, and I have to fit the launch rail to it. So I'm just marking out three holes with marking fluid and my calipers. And I'm going to drill these for an M5 bolt. Uh, this will go into a T-nut uh, in the 1010 rail uh, that's going on this launch pad. Uh, and that'll allow me to switch the type of rail that's on this launch pad if I ever want to try and fly uh, either uh, something that needs a 1515 rail or something that needs a longer 1010 rail, or if I damage or bend the 1010 rail during transportation, I like it swap that. Here you can see one of my friends, Teva. Uh, he's another engineer at Agile Space Industries, and uh, he's helping me put everything together. Uh, we've got a launch coming up this weekend, and so we're just doing the fit checks. I got some incredible slow motion footage of the liftoff. Uh, this is filmed at 240 frames a second on my GoPro, um, and it looks great from this angle. Unfortunately, from the onboard footage, you can tell that things didn't go quite as planned. Uh, the 38mm CTI motor that I've been using was from the back half of the back of and I thought I'd checked the forward closure to make sure it was good, but unfortunately, it exploded anyway. Uh, so this rocket is probably retired. I lost a fin, it blew out the bulkhead, it charred through the, the webbing that attaches the sections of the vehicle together. But uh, it was really exciting to get this new launch pad into service, and a bunch of my friends flew their own rockets off of it at this same launch right after me. Uh, hopefully I have a rocket to fly on it here soon again, uh, to one that will work and succeed and let me show all kinds of cool footage. I'm Charlie Garcia, thank you for watching, Godspeed.